in safe Kentucky. Frankfurt needs fighters who are tough as shell. I'd be honored to have your vote. Coming up on Mountain News this morning, the London Fire Department and Red Cross teamed up to help install free fire alarms in homes. And two students from Middlesboro are getting a head start in their career with a program from MIT. Dedicated to Eastern and Southern Kentucky, this is WYMT Mountain News This Morning. Good morning, I'm Madison Carmouche. The time is 6 a.m. on October 25th. Let's check in with meteorologist Evan Hatter for a look at your forecast this morning. Now you're talking about how it's going to be cooler on Halloween possibly. How's that looking? Yeah, it's looking a little cooler once we get past this weekend and into early next week. But until then, we are looking much warmer than we should be for this time here. We should be in about the middle 60s. And we're going to be much, much warmer than that. Here's the view outside from London Corbin Airport, where it is a little chilly this morning. They're in the mid 40s out there with no big weather worries to uh, cover this morning. 50 Hazard Harlan, 60 in Jackson, pushing 60 in the Big Sandy. But notice the mid 40s as you head uh, along the Highway 80 Hal Rogers Parkway corridor and the I-75 corridor. Warmer to the west as you get closer to Lake Cumberland, where Somerset and Monticello are checking in the middle 50s. Like I said, we should be in the mid 60s this time of year. We'll be there this mid morning. How about mid 70s for daytime highs out there today with just some drifting clouds? So we're in good shape today, but that changes through the next couple of days. We'll increase the cloudiness, increase the shower chances, then decrease the temperatures. That break down a little bit later on. Madison? Evan, thank you. A Kentucky broadcasting legend is dead. Sue Wiley, who was -E WLEX TV's first female anchor and one of the first in the state, died last night following a car crash in Lexington. Wiley worked for the NBC affiliate from 1968 to 1998. Wiley also hosted a show on WVLK radio, where she retired from in 2013. She was inducted into the Kentucky Journalism Hall of Fame in 1999, among many others. Sue Wiley was 90 years old. She was a legend. She was a pioneer. She uh, really cared about making sure that people, when she was in the television end of it doing news, that they were informed uh, without bias uh, and, and prejudice and the fact that she just would... Uh, do things that n no woman had ever done before in broadcasting. Uh, first uh, anchor in Kentucky in the news was one of the first, if not the first, in uh, Miami, Florida. Before she came here, she was she was just um, Sue Wiley was just completely unique. Wiley was inducted in the Kentucky Journalism Hall of Fame in 1999 and was awarded a Silver Circle Award for Lifetime Achievement by the National Academy of Television Arts and Sciences. The reason behind many overdoses in Kentucky were discussed yesterday in a committee meeting in Frankfurt. The Commission on Race and Access to Opportunity met at the state capitol. The committee heard from several groups who outlined what they believe are the reasons people turn to drugs when they see very few options for alternatives. Brian Hubbard, who chairs the Opioid Abatement Advisory Commission, says they started noticing a change in 2021. Drugs are impacting more urban areas than rural. He says the tidal wave of destruction is from fentanyl. That year marked the very first time that the rate of opioid-related deaths among black Kentuckians exceeded that of whites. The commission is hearing information as they prepare for the General Assembly session, which will begin January 2nd. Patients receiving treatment for opioid use disorders via telehealth are more likely to complete their treatment than those receiving it non-telehealth settings. That's according to a newly released study from UK. 48% of those who started treatment on telehealth remained in treatment for 90 continuous days, compared to the 44% of those who started treatment in a non-telehealth setting. L Lindsay Hammerslag, the lead author of UK study, says they also found no difference in the number of overdoses experienced between those receiving care in telehealth versus non-telehealth settings. We really wanted that extra measure to make sure 
hey, not only are they staying in treatment, but also they're not having any bad outcomes at a greater rate than you would expect otherwise. Hammer Slag says she hopes these positive results can help inform future policy. This study was conducted as a part of the help of the healing community study supported by the National Institute on Drug Abuse. American Red Cross officials say house fires kill seven people per day in the U.S. That's why the London Fire Department teamed up with the Red Cross to take part in their home fire campaign, helping install free smoke alarms in homes. WYMT's Jack Demler has more on the partnership. In Carl Hacker's first year as the chief of the London Fire Department, there was an instance of a fire taking the lives of individuals. Two months in being chief, we had a fire and the house caught on fire and the infant was not able to get out. And we found the infant, the infant had passed from smoke inhalation. Hacker says when firefighters went into the house, they did not find a working smoke alarm. Had they been a far alarm there, the parents might have known quick enough to have got everybody out. An issue that Hacker says impacts far too many homes. That's why the London Fire Department and the American Red Cross work together to distribute and install three smoke detectors into homes in need as a part of the Sound the Alarm home fire campaign event. But there is a large number of homes that do not have them or they don't work. They've been in the home for, you know, 10, 20 years um, and they've never been changed. So this is a good opportunity and sometimes they're expensive and, you know, people in our area just can't afford them. So it's a great opportunity for a partnership. A partnership that Mayor Randall Weddle says is crucial in getting more smoke alarms to the public. Since taking office, we have a safer initiative throughout the community to make sure that we're getting more of those in to the fire department and partnering with Red Cross. Uh, it was a pivoting point for us as a city. Giving easier access to create a safer community. In London, Jack Demler, WYMT Mountain News. While fire alarms can be delivered all year, the Sound the Alarm events will run until November 9th and then again in the spring. Friday and Saturday are the last days of the Terror Squad Haunted House. The Terror Squad is one of the biggest fundraising events of the year for the London Laurel County Rescue Squad. London Fire Department Chief Carl Hacker says it is one of the best haunted houses in the area. I worked it for years. It's probably one of the best haunted houses around. Uh, they always uh, always have a bunch of good scenes. Nobody leaves without a good scare. The Terror Squad begins haunting at 8 p.m. both Friday and Saturday and runs until midnight. From MIS to MIT, two Middlesboro independent students are taking courses with Massachusetts Institute of Technology. WYMT's Chandler Wilcox talked to the students about their new opportunity. The opportunity seemed surreal. I was literally talking, I was like, <laughs> MIT is literally the ones that got into in Spider-Man. So yeah, I mean, I think it's crazy because like, even when teachers like, they just look at me like, MIT, that's crazy. Ahmad and Hex started taking a course called Girls Who Want to Learn Many Interesting Things. The course is part of a fall outreach program. We immediately knew it was gonna be like a good program. So we jumped to the opportunity, especially since we're in a small school. The Prasad Foundation, which helps grow education in Appalachia, was a big part in creating that opportunity. That connection continues to play a role in the school system's growth. You know, the more that we engage our partners and we take advantage of these collaborations and these connections and, and more opportunities like this uh, come to fruition, then that just increases the, the value of uh, uh, the, the STEM approach. Now a few classes into the program, the students are hoping MIT can better prepare them for their careers. Um, I've always either wanted to be a teacher or a dentist, and with technology like growing so fast now, it would be really nice to like know a little bit more about it. The classes will last through mid-December. Chris Stotts also says there will be future opportunities with MIT ahead. In Millsboro, Chandler Wilcox, WYMT Mountain News. Isa Ahmad and Kayla Heck also say they are getting to learn with many peers from across the world, including New York and Hong Kong.
Well, no big weather worries this morning, though some of us are a little on the cool side. Others already mild this morning. Here's a look from our Pikeville Medical Center cameras. Still a little while from sunrise, but it is a little cool out there this morning in parts, but Pikeville not one of them. Upper 50s to near 60 out there this morning. We will continue to see plenty of cool air in spots this morning, and then we'll really warm up into the afternoon. How about low to mid 50s as or low to mid 40s in parts of the region nearing 50. Then you head closer to the Big Sandy where they are nearing 60 already this morning. No big issues on pinpoint Doppler. Just a few high level clouds kind of getting picked up there as the moisture. So the next 12 hours we continue to see those temperatures. They'll increase to near 75 for a daytime high today, nearly 10 degrees above where we should be. I'll have the details on when we can expect yet more in the way of shower activity coming up in a few minutes. Stay with us. I'm Billy Johnson. I grew up in eastern Kentucky. This is where I live. I know the people, the